Have you ever cracked open a coconut and thought to yourself, well, this is definitely a nut? After all, it has nut right in its name. It's hard as a rock, and you can eat what's inside. Seems pretty straightforward, right? But here's the twist. Botanically speaking, a coconut is not actually a nut. In fact, it belongs to a completely different category of fruits. And the story of why that is turns out to be surprisingly fascinating, taking us through science, history, and even a little bit of global culture. So let's peel back the layers of the coconut, literally and figuratively, and figure out what's really going on, right here on History of Simple Things. At first glance, the coconut seems like it should fit right in with walnuts, hazelnuts, and chestnuts. They all share that tough outer shell, that crunchy sounding name, and that association with food. But in botany, the classification of a true nut is very specific. A true nut, like an acorn or hazelnut, develops from a single ovary, has a hard outer shell that does not open naturally to release the seed, and the seed itself stays enclosed in that shell. The fruit and the seed are basically one inseparable unit. Now compare that to the coconut. Yes, it's hard on the outside, but its structure is a lot more complex. Instead of being a nut, a coconut is what botanists call a droop. And if that word makes you pause, don't worry. You're already familiar with droops, even if you don't realize it. Peaches, cherries, plums, and even olives are droops. They have three distinct layers, a thin outer skin, a fleshy middle, and a hard inner pit that holds the seed. When you think about it that way, the coconut has more in common with a peach than with a walnut. Strange, right? So how does the coconut fit into that definition? Well, let's break it down. The green outer layer that you often see in tropical markets. That's the coconut skin, also known as the exocarp. Inside that, there's a fibrous husk called the mesocarp. That's the part that gets dried and turned into coir, which people use for ropes, mats, and brushes. Then comes the hard brown shell, the endocarp. That's the layer we usually picture when we think of a coconut, the one you have to smash open. Finally, inside that shell, you find the white edible part, the seed's endosperm, which we call coconut meat, and the liquid we know as coconut water. So the coconut checks all the boxes for being a droop, not a nut. But if that's the case, why do we call it a nut at all? The answer is a mix of history, language, and perception. The word coconut actually comes from the 16th century, when Portuguese and Spanish explorers first encountered the fruit in tropical regions. They noticed its rough, hairy shell and the three indentations that looked a bit like a face. In Portuguese, coco meant head or skull. Add nut to describe its nut-like appearance, and the word coconut was born. So the name stuck, not because it was scientifically accurate, but because it was convenient and descriptive. And as the coconut spread across the world, carried by explorers, traders, and ocean currents, so did its misleading name. But the coconut is special in other ways too. Beyond its classification, it has played a huge role in human culture, survival, and trade. Unlike a walnut or hazelnut, the coconut is often called the tree of life, because nearly every part of it is useful. Its water is refreshing and hydrating. The meat can be eaten raw, dried, or pressed into oil. The husk becomes rope and mats, the shell becomes bowls and tools, and the leaves of the palm are woven into roofs and baskets. For centuries, people living in coastal and island communities have relied on the coconut not just as food, but as a building material a source of fuel, and even a container. This versatility made the coconut essential for travel and trade. Seafaring cultures discovered that coconuts could float across oceans without spoiling, sprout on new shores, 
and provide life-saving nutrition along the way. The coconut's ability to survive long journeys in salt water is one of the reasons it spread so widely across the tropics from Southeast Asia to the Caribbean. That's why today, coconuts are nearly universal symbols of beaches, islands, and the tropics. So while the coconut might not be a true nut, it holds a unique place in the plant kingdom. And its classification actually highlights something bigger, the difference between everyday language and scientific language. In everyday speech, we group foods by how they look, how they taste, or how we use them. In science, classification is about structure, function, and reproduction. Both approaches make sense in their own way, but they don't always line up. That's why we end up with these fun contradictions. We spread peanut butter on our toast, even though peanuts aren't nuts. We enjoy almond milk, though almonds are seeds. And we sip coconut water from a fruit that has more in common with a peach than with a walnut. Now you might be wondering, does this scientific distinction actually matter? In daily life, probably not. If you go to the store and ask for a coconut, no one's going to hand you a peach. But in certain contexts, like allergy research, it can make a big difference. People who are allergic to true nuts aren't necessarily allergic to coconuts because they come from different plant families. That can be a huge relief for those who still want to enjoy coconut products without the risk. The coconut also has a cultural dimension that goes beyond botany. In many traditions, the coconut is a symbol of purity, resilience, and prosperity. In Hindu rituals, for example, coconuts are often broken as offerings to deities. In Polynesian cultures, stories and myths describe the coconut as a gift from the gods. Even in everyday life, the coconut has become a global icon of relaxation, beach vacations, and tropical cocktails. The very sound of the word coconut tends to conjure up palm trees and warm breezes. So, while science tells us that a coconut is not technically a nut, culture reminds us that names carry their own kind of truth. The nut in coconut might not be botanically correct, but it still connects us to centuries of human interaction with this remarkable fruit. So, is a coconut a nut? The answer is no. It's a droop, a fibrous, three-layered fruit that defies the simple label its name suggests. But perhaps that's what makes it so interesting. The coconut reminds us that the world is often more complex than it first appears. And sometimes the names we give things are more about us than about nature. And honestly, that's what makes simple questions like this so fascinating because they open the door to stories about science, history, language, and culture. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.